today I'm going to be tying a pretty simple trout space sculpin. You can fish this fly on a swing rod, or you could just strip it like normal, how I normally do it. So to start, in the vise, I have a Mustad 9672 streamer in a size 6. I've cut off the hook, and I'm just using the shank of that hook. For our actual hook, I suggest using any sort of sting hook or like trailer hook. I'm just using what I have today. But to attach this to our shank, we're going to take a piece of some monofilament, pinch it and thread it through the eye of your hook so it creates a little loop. Go back through the hook, put the hook through the loop, and pull tight. That will attach it. And next, set this aside, and we'll attach our thread to our shank. Just like that. Snip off the extra. And next, Grab some lead eyes. Today I'm using lead eyes in silver. We'll wrap back up to our eye of our hook and we'll attach it to the top of the hook. Take a few securing wraps and then flip it over to the bottom. Just like that. So it's sitting on the bottom of our hook. Next, you can attach it just by taking thread wraps. Make sure you really lock this in place. Figure eight, spirals, everything to attach it. Once you complete it with that, wrap down and grab your hook and monofilament. Take it, and it doesn't matter the length yet, just do three or four securing wraps so you're able to move it still, and then find the length that fits well. I like it about maybe little bit less than an inch sticking off the back. Once you found that length, you can just secure it in with some really tight wraps. Make sure you wrap all the way up. To behind the eyes. And then pull one piece of monofilament back, pull the other back and continue to wrap it down. Once you're done with that, take your scissors, snip them off close. Now we can be begin with the building of the fly. Before we start with the building of our fly, we'll just take a little drop of super glue onto our monofilament. We'll secure that down nice and tight. We don't want that monofilament to go anywhere. If you get a little extra, don't worry about it. You just take something like a piece of paper or a napkin and just dab it off. Now we'll just take some securing wraps over it just so that the super glue dries. Now we'll start with our fly. To begin, we'll grab some ice dub UV brown, and we're gonna create a little bump at the back of our fly. So we'll grab a pretty small amount of dubbing and create a dubbing noodle on your thread. About a three inch long dubbing noodle, pretty thick, because we're gonna just build up right here at the back. We're just gonna build a little ball just 
just like that. That will just help prop up our micro zonkers or micro pine squirrel zonker, which we'll grab next and measure it so that it extends all the way back to the hook. So right about there, we'll split these fibers. You can wet your fingers. You can split the fibers really easy and we'll tie it in right there in front of our ball of dubby. Make sure you tie this onto the top of the hook shank. Take some securing wraps right there. And this ball of dubbing that we've created helps prop up this back zonker. We'll take this remaining strip and we'll fold it back because we're going to use it later. And next we'll grab some UV polar chenille in olive copper. Cut off about a four inch section and tie it in right in front of your micro pine squirrel zonkers. Secure it pretty good. And we'll take about four wraps with this chenille. One, two, three, four. So we get our fourth. We'll catch it with our thread. Don't worry about trapping fibers. Give it three securing wraps and then we'll snip it off. This will help show which fibers are actually in there and then we'll take more securing wraps. Boom, fold them all back. And next, create a dubbing loop. You want about a three inch long dubbing loop no, four inch long dubbing, dubbing loop, and we will just secure it just like that. All right, for our first dubbing loop, we're gonna be using Arizona Semi-Seal in Peacock and Ice Dub Red. We'll start with our Semi-Seal, and we'll just start by grabbing a nice pinch out of the back. We'll line up the fibers by pulling it apart and placing it back on top of each other. And we'll set this down on our table, just like that. Next, we'll grab some iced up bread, take a s pretty small pinch of iced up bread, and we'll do the same thing and align the fibers, except these fibers are especially long. So we'll fold them over and snip it at its midpoint. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going into the dubbing loop. And again, we'll align the fibers just like that. And we'll put it down at the bottom of our dubbing loop, just like that. And that's our finished first dubbing loop. We'll take this and put it into our dubbing loop. Once we've prepared our dubbing loop and we've prepared our dubbing, we'll take our dubbing and we will insert it into the loop and pinch it with our fingers. Grab your dubbing whirl, insert it into the loop, give it a spin. You wanna spin this up nice and good. Once it's spun up, we'll take a dubbing brush and we'll pick it all out. Take your time on this. Once we've picked it all out, we'll fold all of the fibers back. 
and we'll wrap it right in front of our polar chenille. Taking nice touching wraps all the way up to just in front of our eyes. Secure it with your thread. Secure it really well. And snip your dubbing loop off. Just like that. Again, we will take our dubbing brush and we're gonna brush it all out. Fold all the fibers back. And we're gonna split it on the top here, so it on each side, so that we can lay our zonker strip down and across. So we'll comb it all out onto each side. Just like that. And we'll fold our pine squirrel zonker over and tie it down right behind our eyes. Once it's tied down really well, We'll snip off our zonker and give more securing wraps. Next, we'll create another dubbing loop and we'll prepare a section of micro pine squirrel zonker strips to put into our dubbing loop. For our second dubbing loop, we're gonna be using this pine squirrel zonker. In order to do this, you're gonna need two chip clips of the exact same size. To begin, we'll take one chip clip and we're going to insert the zonker with the leather first and secure it. It doesn't have to be perfect because a little trick you can do, you can take the fibers and you can pull it, pull them up and that will butt the leather up against the pinch of the clip. We'll take the other clip and secure it. So now it's holding both of it and we'll take off the first clip and you can see that it exposes just the leather of the zonker. We'll take our scissors and we'll cut right along the leather all the way up just like that you can see it leaves just enough for us to grab it in our dubbing loop and then we will we will be able to spin it up <clears throat> once we've prepared our zonker strip and our chip clip we'll wet our fingers and then wet our dubbing loop so that it grips a lot better and we'll insert all of it into our dubbing loop, pinch it off, grab your dubbing whirl, insert, insert it into our dubbing loop, give it a spin, all spins up nice and good. Make sure you really spin it, don't want any of it coming out, grab your dubbing brush, lightly and gently brush it out so we have no trapped fibers. Wet your fingertips again. Fold all of the fibers back facing one direction. Just like that. And we'll begin wrapping this starting right where we tied our zonker strip off. 
and we're gonna fit all of this behind the eyes. Continue folding it back as you wrap up. Once, you, once you're done, take the end of your dubbing loop, thread it in between your eyes and wrap it up in front of the eyes. Take your thread up to the front and tie it off in front of the eyes. Once you've done that, you can take your scissors, snip off the loop, continue taking wraps to secure it, grab your wood finisher, use it to do a four to five turn whip finish, do two of them. See you're not really well. Snip your thread free. You can also brush it out again if you want. I like to brush everything forward and then brush it all back. Boom, there's your finished trout space sculpin. Thanks for watching.